A pleasant good morning to everyone. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. It's another live. We are here for Pastor's Corner, and we are delighted to have all of you who normally come in very early and tune in and, 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 and interact with us. So we are, we are delighted to welcome you here for another Pastor's Corner, this 22nd day of August 2023. And today, very timely, relevant subject to discuss here in the studio, the SDA Church and Session. Ah, the SDA Church and Session. What is this all about? Um, we are going to find out um, the SDA Church and Session. We have, um, well, let, 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 let me pray and then and introduce our guests for this very important um, topic this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here. We thank you for your mercies, your goodness, and your love. And you have allowed us to be here at another pastor's corner as we are about to share with our viewers and listeners all over the world, we pray, Lord, that you will guide our thoughts and our thinking. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, so Amen. we are here for another Pastor's Corner. Um, and the, the, the topic, the SDA Church and Session. And I have um, my guests with me, and I think these are the most fitting guests <laughs> to respond to these questions that we have um, this morning. Um, to my extreme left, we have Pastor Charles Gittens. Pastor Charles Gittens is currently the pastor in the Northeastern District of um, Churches here in the Grenada Conference. Um, and how do I, why do I think Pastor Gittens um, is qualified to respond to the questions? Pastor Charles Gittens was a um, former administrator um, twice, you know, um, executive secretary of the Ghana Conference, Executive Secretary of the Grenada Conference. So if you're talking about session, that's a man that can respond to questions. Um, welcome, Pastor Giddens. Say hello to the people. Thanks, thanks a lot, Pastor. And thanks for remembering uh, that I used to be. <laughs> 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 thanks for remembering. I am now a district pastor and enjoying it. Praise I God. need to say that. I'm enjoying <laughs> it. <laughs> Praise God. And to my immediate left, um, we have Dr. Clinton Lewis, the President of the Greenland Conference of Seven Adventists, but before he greets you, I would say the next time Doc, Doc sits and passes corner, right. you'll be, <laughs> you be the former president. Just, just right. say the, former, the former secretary, <laughs> but now he's the president. Dr. Lewis, say hello to people. Good morning. Yeah, thank you so much, Pastor. It's a kind of pleasant good morning to all our listeners. A special uh, good morning to Sister Stevens, my good friend. And um, as you heard, uh, we have session beginning tomorrow, and um, I will no longer. I will be retiring at the end of this month. And therefore, the next time you see me on Pastor's Corner, because you will see me again. But when you see me, I will be no longer be the president of the Grenada Conference of Seven Adventists. I'm very happy to be with you this morning and so that we can share with you uh, about what conference sessions are all about. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. And of course, yes, you're getting all the love from Sister Alicia <laughs> Stevens. <laughs> I see my cousin Yulin Alexander from New York there. We're we happy. For all of you who, are, who have already um, tuned in and uh, waiting for it. So, gentlemen, let's get on the ball. When we hear about session in the Seventh Adventist Church, what does that connote? When we say session, because, you know, um, pastors, sometimes you meet guys and you, or you hear guys say, guys, I'm going to go off this afternoon because there is a session in Cuthbert Peter's Park. Or they say, I'm going to Monroe because they are session down there. Okay? But when we talk about session in the Seventh day Adventist church, what are we really referring to? What, what is that? A sports meet? What is that? <laughs> well, for, for us, it is a spiritual meeting. That must be stressed. It's a spiritual meeting. But it's a, really a meeting of the consti uh, constituency um, of that particular uh, field, be it a conference or a mission. In our case, it's a conference. So it's a meeting. Uh, a constituency meeting, but it's a special constituency meeting because we hold constituency meeting every year. But this one is a constituency meeting where leaders, officers, and directors are being chosen to govern the, or lead in the work for the next quadrennium or the next four years. And it is a process that is so important that uh, the, the, whereas in a constituency meeting, the local conference president would be the one controlling this. When you come to uh, a session, it is a constituency meeting where the upper uh, 
level of the church would be present because the one who directs that uh, meeting, that constituency meeting, is really the president of the particular union. So do you see the conference president leading out, officiating over the session, but the one who has the overall oversight, uh, total control of that session, would be the president of the Caribbean Union. Okay, wonderful. Pastor Guinness, you got to add something, say uh, something, yeah? Uh, obviously, I concur with uh, my president. Uh, I am adding and emphasizing also that this, this session, it's the, that's the legal framework mm -hmm. within which you will operate to choose leaders because as Dr. Lewis mentioned, at the constituency meetings, uh, you don't choose leaders. Uh, no. you, the directors report and uh, there may be discussion on the report. However, That's right. at the conference or mission session, this is a legal framework where you follow the constitution and it is within that legal framework that democ um, democracy prevails and the leaders, administrators, and directors are chosen. That's correct. So the, that, the, the, the emphasis is this is a legal framework within which this is done. Um, I must emphasize also that definitely uh, if you're choosing uh, administrators and a president, the sitting president, he himself cannot preside over That's correct. he himself either being returned mm -hmm. or somebody else being changed. So hence, the higher organization, the president of the higher organization, that is the individual mm -hmm. who will overall preside Sorry. over it. In that's this case, uh, Dr. Corn Tobias. That's correct. Yes, and of course, that's, that, that, that is in relation to the union, but it goes right up the, up the level. Yes, that's because right. Because if the unions are having session, then mm -hmm. the, the personnel from the Inter-American division, division or the right. respective division. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, just to say, when the GC is having a session, yes. then a committee, special committee is from a, a chairperson because there is nobody beyond the GC president. Yes. So if the GC president has to be chosen, mm -hmm. then someone is elected to chair that committee, yeah. that nominating committee, um, until the, the, the GC president is chosen. So All someone, right. uh, as just backing up your point, that the person themselves can sit right. to choose themselves. That's right. So, so we are we are we are learning mm -hmm. that 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 session in the Seventh Adventist Church is not about DJ no. and about party no. and eating. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no session means connote something else. Yes, uh, as was said. Um, so I think you got it. By the way, well, you, I, I will also add, Pastor, that yeah. that uh, a session is so important to the Adventist Church that not only the Union President. Who has the is responsible for the session? But even then, representatives always come from the division, yes. one step higher, who also uh, comes there to to oversight and mm -hmm. to make sure things are done decently and orderly. Yeah. So so you go right up. You have the conference leaders there. You have the the union administrators. Um, they are there, and then you have a representative from the division. Yes, ensuring that. Um, yes. That you know, in 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 national elections, you 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 have persons that they sometimes send from other the OECs, for example, right. they have election. They have, yes. they have election observers. Oh, yes, that's correct. <laughs> Make sure things so in the church, the the church has this. Um, the church is not saying well anything nefarious would happen, but those persons are there to represent. And if there's any right. clarity that is needed, exactly. they can they can give clarity. Give clarity. But you, yes, you are viewers and listeners. Remember, remember, you can ask your questions. The I, I said. The men who are, who are responding are well qualified. If there's anybody to be qualified that can answer those questions, it, it's um, Dr. Lewis and Pastor Giddens who have served, <laughs> who are serving and have served yeah. administrators. So please ask your questions relative to session. We're staying yes. with, with session and any clarity on that, all right? So we've, we understand that. We're moving on. Um, could you kindly share with us why a session? Um, I think we went into a little bit, but Pastor Giddens. Why a session? And then Dr. Lewis will then yeah. co probably comment on the details, the process. Why a session? Why do we need to have a session? Uh, well, human beings are of such uh, that they want and they need reports as to what has happened over a period of time. In this case, over a four-year period. Mm -hmm. uh, added to that, we, we, we must understand uh, that... We who are leading, individuals who are leading the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we must be free and open for questioning. 
hence the, the, the session is the framework within which this occurs. Take, for instance, the various directors uh, present, the president present report, and the administration present their report. Individuals sitting and listening to those reports are allowed to make observations and they are allowed also to ask questions and also to make recommendations. Mm -hmm. Hence, it's important that people don't just serve. Uh, they should be called in for questioning uh, in an amicable as well as in a courteous manner. Uh, further, uh, human beings like change. Uh, for whatever reason, human <laughs> beings like change. Uh, somebody is going to listen to me and say, hey, pastor, human beings don't like change. <laughs> Both statements, take them for what they are worth. Mm -hmm. So an individual is serving as a president for four years, uh, and people are looking, and administrators and directors, people are looking on. Uh, there would be people within the constituency who may want change. There may be individuals who do not want change. That's right. Right? Hence, the session allows for individuals to either make changes or allow individuals to go on for another four-year period. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, the, hence, the thing is change or no change. But let the constituency and representatives of the constituency at the session decide what direction that is going to go into. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Yes, that's correct. Well, uh, as far as the process is concerned, the Adventist Church uh, operates with a representative system of governance, uh, which means that when we come to a session, everybody cannot be there to make decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, in our conference of over 14,000, if we said, okay, at the session, all 14,000 members must come to make the decision, that is going to be chaos and confusion. Mm -hmm. So we have a representative system, and uh, thereby, uh, based on the Constitution, that governs our conference. It tells every church entity how many members can represent them at that session. Right. Then there's a process. When a church uh, is told, based on the constitution, you have one a delegate or two delegates, then the church board would meet and uh, look at this and decide who they want to recommend. Uh, to the church, then they have to take it to the church body. And uh, the whole church body will have to decide do we really want that person mm -hmm. or persons to be the ones who represent us, or they can change it. They have the power to do that. And But eventually, um, when the vote is taken, these are the people that are going to come from all the different churches to the session. And they are coming there having voice and vote. Okay. Because they are there to make decisions and not just on behalf of not on behalf of the local church, but on behalf of the whole conference um, as a whole. So the process is um, is well uh, worked out and very clear, and everybody knows what that that process um, really is. Wonderful. Is. And Doc JB JB is agreeing with you. JB says that's what makes this church organization different from the rest. Correct. It demonstrates a higher calling. Yes. You're so yes. correct, um, we, um, Pastor. Phil, yes. but is there with two comments. I read the second one. He says, when you attend a session, when you attend, you learn about the issues, mm -hmm. you know, why a session, witness the successes, talk with other believers, and mm -hmm. form on a passionate opinion about the decisions, methods, and approaches of the church. Indeed, attending a session will make you more informed as a member of the church. So there was Pastor True. Philbert giving the why, you know, yes. why, why a session, why attendance. Yes. But as Pastor Giddens was saying too, um, it's like, you know, democracy, yes. elections, where you, you, you go to the polls every five years, mm -hmm. in, you know, every four years, right? The U.S. is getting ready for election next year because, you know, in places where there are no election, we call it um, autocracy, where, yes. you know, um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> where one person, you know, just, yeah. just um, comes by and, and you know, a monarchy, you know, right. <laughs> you know, but um, the, the the session is like an election process. So yes. Why allow, as you said, Pastor Giddens, the persons determining that that those persons who are there, that person, yeah. we want them to continue. Then yeah. that, that's fine. But the yeah. person is not continuing by themselves. No, mm -hmm. they are continuing the permission of right. those others, yeah. so they can continue. But with by the, I think it's better yeah. because when you're there by yourself, um, you don't know what folks are thinking. But when yeah. the folks you're there and the, the folks are the ones who 
yeah. allow you to be there, then it's not you, it's yeah. them. So well, in recent times, we have been stressing now that there's not a continuity. Mm. Yes, it, it's you. You are there for four years. Yeah, right. That's it. Mm -hmm. So now, when you come to the session, people are being not re-elected. Mm -hmm. People are being elected. Okay. So so now we are changing the whole concept so that people don't go there thinking, well, I have to continue. Mm -hmm. Your, your term of office is over. Oh, okay. That's it. All right. And um, now they are choosing people. You may be chosen, um, re-elected for another term, or not, um, or not even considered, or uh, be elected. Okay. So that's so. It. But I want to um, um, make a point um, that Pastor Gittins talked about quickly. He talked about um, the process of educating people. Mm -hmm. And that's very important because in the representative system, Every member of the church has to uh, have the idea that I am represented at this session. Okay. The people that I have chosen, I have voted to choose these delegates, they are representing us. Right. So they are our voice. Mm -hmm. So when, when uh, the session takes place, every member, all our 14,000 plus members are represented at the session. Okay. So that's, that, that's how it works. Yeah. And... Um, I like what you said, Doc. People like myself, today, yeah. the session begins tomorrow. Yes. Um, people like myself. Correct. Today's the last day. So it, exactly. It ends. <laughs> it ends. It, it ends. ends. It ends. Right at the session. Yes. Yeah, so we move, we're moving on. We're moving on. Um, yes, yeah, someone is asked, saying, um, Lizzie, John, may the good Lord um, guide you all in choosing the right people. Um, thank you. Amen. Keep praying, John, keep yeah, praying keep for praying, the process. Keep praying. How yeah. can... How can how can or how should the church prepare for the session? Pastor Giddens, mm -hmm. the church. Well, in preparation for the session is one, uh, I would say two things. First of all, uh, the congregations should be involved in serious prayer. Correct. The congregations should be involved in asking God for guidance mm -hmm. as the session as we are going into the session. And this should not be session tomorrow, pray today. Mm -mm. No, I'm not seeing it that way. It should be a process where, okay, you know this is session year. From the beginning of the year, the emphasis should be there. That's one. Number two, uh, because it is something spiritual, unlike a uh, world or uh, country election. No, it's not about that and individuals in country election searching to see uh, what, what amount of mud they right. can throw yes. on an opponent. No, it's not about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. It's a spiritual process Correct. where we all, us as church leaders, pastors, elders, church members, we need to be involved in ongoing process. The entire process should be bathed mm -hmm. in prayer. Correct. That's one. Number two, uh, I'm seeing clearly that the congregation should be educated long before the session. The church board or the governing body as well as uh, the normal membership should be educated. And in this process, members should be allowed to ask questions about the session. That's Don't right. just present and leave. No. Correct. Allow them to ask questions so that they are thoroughly and properly educated. So prayer and education. Okay. That's um, a way to approach it. Yeah, Wonderful. Uh, Before Doc comment, yeah, Doc, yeah. so I'm reading this and then you comment, yeah. Doc, because that's interesting. Yeah. And if, and Anderson Felix is saying, I've never seen the church at large give their input on the person or persons chosen as a delegate. It's always the board making the choice of persons. So educate me on this. Okay. Doc, I'll, come, I'll, I'll come back to that. But let okay. me just say a little thing on Pastor Gittins here. On the, on the educating, which is very important, uh, that education should also embrace that no matter how good a person you believe a person has served, mm -hmm. that does not guarantee that that person will be elected. Okay. And, and sometimes people, people are mad by that mm -hmm. because they say, man, this president, man, look at the amount of things you know, have been accomplished. Yeah. Or this director, mm -hmm. look at the amount of things that have been done. This man is a live wire. He's been mm -hmm. motivating the church. He's been rallying the church. Look mm -hmm. at the amount of things we have accomplished. Yes, that may be true. Mm -hmm. But when we get there mm -hmm. and the, the delegates sit in the nominating committee 
and we believe they are guided by the Spirit of God, when they come out with a slate and they say, that's it, mm -hmm. unless there's uh, some legitimate reason that this should not be voted, mm -hmm. once it's voted, we just have to respect it mm -hmm. and say, this is what God mm -hmm. has led us to choose. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we, we rally together. <laughs> right. So the church has to be, yes. are you saying that the church has to be educated on that point of mm -hmm. accepting yes. what is presented? Because, you right. know, I like to say, um, before Doc, you come back yeah. in on that, I like to say it this way, that it's always God's will. I yes. always say that. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's either God's, I like to say, use the word promissive yeah. or descriptive, meaning yes. what he what he what he describes is going to happen yes. or what he permits to happen whichever way yes. but it's still God's will because he can he can stop it that's correct so the church must be educated i believe to accept mm -hmm. the will whichever whichever way mm -hmm. yes. yes yeah but doc, okay. um, yeah, well, let me address this an interesting th yeah. thing from one of our elders Feel indicating yes. that Yes. Um, you know, we're not dealing with it. By the way, before Doc comments, we're not dealing with what has happened. What no, we, no, no. We're dealing with what should happen. Should happen. <laughs> should happen. Yes. Yes. Should happen. So, come in. No, it's very important that um, as leaders of the church, elders, pastors, that we constantly remind ourselves of um, the, the manual, the church manual, that guides us in um, decisions that we make. And, uh, and so, as a... Uh, a member of the church, not just the leaders, the members of the church also should acquaint themselves with the church manual and the way things are operated. Some people operate from the past mm -hmm. without reviewing where the manual mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. presently. Yeah. So in choosing uh, the delegates, mm -hmm. the, the, the board right. um, comes like a subcommittee recommends. in that process yeah. and recommends right. to the church body because these people who are chosen are not representing the board, the, the board no. they are representing the entire body of the church. That's right. And it's the church's right to, to decide who do they want to represent them. Because even with the recommendation that the church board brings to the, um, to the church to be voted upon, and they have the right to say, no, 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 we want somebody else. The church has that right. And, and they can change that. So this is one of the decisions because we know that the board makes certain decisions on behalf of the church. But this is one of the decisions among many that the church board cannot make. The church board recommends. The church is the one who decides who the delegate or delegate is going to be. Uh, Doc, just, just a quick sentence on what you're saying also. Yes. A lot of people in the church behave as if whatever the church board says the church must accept. Yes. But the same manual will point out yeah. that the highest decision-making body in the church is the church at large in terms of bona fide at the business meeting. That's correct. That is. That's hence, correct. in helping with what you're saying, yes. the recommendation comes from the church board, yes. but the church at large can vote it down. Yes, they could. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and, they could. and of course... You know, there are many decisions that a board takes, and that's where it stops. You yes. want, you, you, yeah. you, you want to, um, uh, uh, want to buy a chair. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying, your board that's that's the administrative yeah, right. body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but even as a chairman, as a pastor, you should know if you want to repin the entire church, oh, you, right. you, you, yes. you don't have the board make the decision. Yeah, yeah. The board Correct. recommends, yeah. Correct. and then you take it to the, the business yeah. meeting for the members to vote what right. color of yeah, pins exactly. and what have you. Mm -hmm. so, but but in this respect, the pastor, the chairman doesn't even have the prerogative to decide if to take it. Because the manual says, yes. mm -hmm. the delegate at yes. the church votes. Yes. That's so correct. it's not even the prerogative of the chairman yeah. to decide, shall we bring it to the church, nah. you know? Nah. He has no so choice. Um, if it was done before, we, um, you know, as, as chairman, all chairmen must, should know, as chairpersons, we should yes. know what should be done. If it was not done, well, that's the correct thing to do. Somebody just say it, if it was not done before, the correct things to do is that those are delegated, and that is clear in the manual. It's Very not, clear. It's not, it's not left to the prerogative of the chairperson to decide. No. Shall we take this to the church? No, no. no. The, the manual tells you that the church has to, <laughs> has to vote. That's correct. So, um, that's what it is. That's what it is. Wonderful. We're doing well. We're doing well. Yeah. Seeing all your um, um, comments there, we're happy for that. Um, gentlemen, pastors, there is another term that we often hear around session, and we have used it here, but um, mm. to be specific, delegate. Who or what is a delegate? And how does the delegate chosen? Who? who who is a delegate? Yes. Right. Well, we just spoke a little bit about yes. that. A, a delegate would be a member of a particular congregation who is chosen by that congregation to represent them at the conference session. Such persons have full authority when they get to the session. In other words, they have voice, 
and they have votes. Because a lot of people, anybody could attend the, the, the session. They do a voice and vote. The only people who could speak at a, at a session are delegates. Um, those who are sent um, by the churches to represent that body, they are the only ones who have voice and vote. And so these are the people we refer to as delegates. Okay, so, so someone cannot show up, or, or a session begins tomorrow evening, someone, very good member of the church, even an elder, yeah. what have you. You can't just, you can show up at St. George's, yes. but you, you can't ascribe to yourself the title of a delegate. No, you, yeah, that no. Doesn't, that, <laughs> someone cannot ascribe to themselves. No. So there are delegates, um, regular delegates, by the way, let me just um, say, regular delegates are delegates that are sent by the churches to represent them. Um, you know, yes. uh, chosen, as Dr. Lewis did say, based upon the Constitution. The Greener Conference has a Constitution that That's guides right. the process. Correct. So we're not just saying, okay, um, um, Bylands, we're giving you five delegates. That. Montrose, we're giving you two. Mm. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's based upon the Constitution, based That's on right. membership. That's right. Um, you know, just maybe I could just say, it. Um, I think Pastor Scott was on a program last week that mentions that as well. Mm. But um, the Constitution says that, 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 that every organized church is entitled to a delegate. That's right. Every organized one, church. One. And, and then um, it says, um, and thereafter, every 300 members, That's right. or the larger part thereof, and the larger part of 300, it'd be 151. 151. Yes, yes. you cross the halfway mark. And that's, that's how correct. the other delegates have been described. So it's well, it's well um, sorted out. Someone asked the question, oh, good morning to all. The pastor, yeah, someone, oh, uh, how can I get a manual? Well, the church manuals are normally sold at the ABC. Yes. I, not, I don't think we have them yet. We have the new manual. The latest manual will be the 2022 yes. um, manual because G GC session took place. Um, of course, there was a delay because of COVID yeah. um, by two years. But the G so it's not 2020. 2022, the GC session took place and the manual... Um, is out, but I'm saying we don't have them yet. But anybody, it's not left to the pastors or any group, of special group of persons. Anyone can, you know, go and purchase a manual yeah. and educate yourself That's uh, on the manual. But um, so it's usually at the ABCs, but it's not, it's not there yet. And I want to quickly add to that, Pastor. Yes. That once the general conference session has taken place, uh, the all the changes that have been made in the manual, that manual is now the authentic manual. That is correct. And so. People have to recognize that you cannot just come with a manual mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and quoting from a manual because your manual will be outdated once the session takes place. That is so right. when you go to buy the manual, when you go to the ABC to buy the manual, make sure you are asking them for the manual that, um, that came out from 20, um, 2022. The new manual. And yes. um, don't go and buy um, a manual of the previous um, five years. Because you'll be you'll be outdated. Yes, and I've, and and just to add to that further, um, no, I have I have I have here the copy you know of, of the new manual. Yes. But let's suppose, um, as I said, it's not yet at the ABC. Sister Avian is saying that you can con contact your literature evangelist, and that is correct once yeah. it's available. Yeah. Um, but let's suppose you don't have a copy yet. Um, is that that's not it? It's not about when you have a copy. No. As Doc said, once it's voted, Pastor Giddens exactly. at the GC, that's it. That's it. So when you get your copy, is irrelevant to the yes, issue. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So we've been having a wonderful time thus yes. far, but we want to take a break and just to get ready, take a, a you know a beautiful item of special music. So we go over to the Granoy Church, um, and we'll have a, a couple there um, um, who will render a special item of music for us from the Granoy Church. Let's our heart be blessed. With special music coming from the Gronroy Church. We have a high priest up in heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Investigating. Oh, the Father in a temple made like God and not man behind the veil in a place most holy. Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Investigating, He clears the record. Sanctuary 
makes provisions for me in the sanctuary. Purifying heaven's temple. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. In preparation for his returning. For those who love will follow him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, wonderful, wonderful singing to the, to the name, honor, and glory of God. And that's Amen. what we should do when we, when, when we are blessed with our talents. That's right. We use it for the glory and honor of God. Amen. Yes, that's Amen. what we should do. Amen. Um, we, 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 we've been here, and if you just join us, um, the SDA Church and Session, that's, mm. that's the discussion. With me is um, our president, Dr. Clinton Lewis, and um, Pastor Charles, or one of our pastors, Pastor Charles Gittins, who have been responding to questions relevant to the issue of session. Um, um, before I move on, I just someone asked a question: Is the manual, 2015 manual, um, 19th edition, is it is it outdated? <laughs> and a simple answer to that, um, Dr. Lewis, is what. It is outdated. That's right. Yes. yes, it is outdated. So you have it in your yes. in library, and you can put it there for reference. But to yes. use for the administration of the church, yes. no. No, no, no. Um, you know, and that's course, why it's very important, Pastor, 
that people seek to obtain the manual soon after the general conference session. Once it's available, you should get it early. Because if you allow uh, three years uh, to run before you go and buy the manual, then you only have two years. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you have your manual. Yeah. You can refer to it. Even, yes. even things that are, there are some things that are similar. Yes. But, um, but the fact is that for administration, you always have to be using the current manual. Correct. Yeah. Correct. We're moving on. The Bible describes an episode in Acts chapter 1, verse 15 to um, 26. The question is, could you comment on the passage with respect to our discussion today? It's a lengthy passage, but I want to read it. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 1. Um, you know, so that I'm reading from the easy reading. It says, one day, about 120 people who, were, who believed in Jesus were meeting together. Peter stood up and said to them, my friends, long ago, the Holy Spirit gave King David a message to speak from God. He spoke about the things that Judas would do. Judas was the one who showed the soldiers how to catch Jesus. These things had a, to happen in the way that David wrote in the Bible long ago. Judas belonged to our group of disciples. Jesus chose him to walk together with us. Judas received some money for the bad things that he did. He, brought a, he, bought, a field. he bought a field with that money. So he fell in and that field and he died. His body burst open and the inside part of his body poured out. All the people who lived in Jerusalem heard about his death. So they called that field Akeldama in their own language. Akeldama means the field of blood. Peter then said, this is what King David wrote in the book of the Psalms. Let the house, of he lived, the house that he lived in become empty so that nobody lives in it. Mm -hmm. David also wrote, let someone else do the job which he did. Peter then said, because of this, we must choose another man instead of Judas. Mm -hmm. That man must have been one of our group all the time that the, Lord that the Lord Jesus was with us. That is, from the time when John was baptizing people until the time when Jesus went up to heaven. He Sorry. must be someone who saw Jesus became alive again after he died, as we did. So the apostles agreed the names of two men. One of them was Joseph. People also call him Basabas. And sometimes people call him Justus. The other man was called Matthias. Mm -hmm. Then the whole group prayed, Lord, you know that everybody is really like. People, sorry, please show us which man you have chosen. Which of these two men do you want to be an apostle instead of Judas? Judas left his work as an apostle. Amen. He has now gone to the place where he belonged. Hmm. Finally, verse 26. Then the group used lots to choose yes. the names of one man. It happened that they chose Matthias. So Matthias now became the 12th apostle together with the other 11 men. Amen. Um, that's an episode of Pastor Giddens. Um, the, the question though, can you comment on this passage in respect to our discussion today? Because it's something, some, sounds like something similar to place. Yeah, um, that's a beautiful passage. Yes. Uh, reflecting the way we should go about choosing leaders. In the context of the discussion, administrators, directors, in the context of the discussion. And first of all, I noticed in reading the passage that the first thing they did was pray. Correct. That's the first thing they did. Uh, because choosing God's leaders to lead the church for the next four years is not no joke business. This is serious business. Mm -hmm. Lives are at stake here. And the, the, the mirror of what the apostles are doing should be mirrored. What the apostles are doing should be mirrored by the church. So first, they pray. Mm -hmm. This is important. Praying and asking for guidance from God in moving ahead with this process. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. They did not just say, uh, we're going to choose these individuals. I like this man. I like this. No, 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 no. Prayer. That was uh, the, the, the background within which that, 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 that is the setting within which this was done. The next thing is, uh, they pointed out the criteria. Uh, they pointed out what they were looking for. And specifically they said, the individual that they're choosing to replace Judas should be one who saw 
since before Jesus Christ, since John the Baptist, the reformer, is on the scene. Because he's the man who pointed out, behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. That's right. So this individual must see, he must be an eyewitness like Judas. Mm -hmm. Up to the point when Jesus Christ died, resurrected, must see. Because when you see then you are a true witness. That's so right. they give the specification. That's right. Then it was singled out and uh, they prayed. They give specification as to qualification of the individual they are choosing. And then it's singled out to two individuals. Mm -hmm. So after the entire process and it's singled out to two individuals, it could have been either of the two, but prayer would determine God's guidance and now the cast lots as right. to eventually who this person is. Now, this is, this is a model okay. that the church needs to follow. Yes. And this is the model we present when we are dealing with session. Okay. Can't, you can't go wrong. Yes. It's well, God's guidance. Yeah, except way, except so. but I want to add, mm -hmm. we, follow, we follow that uh, process, but we don't cast lots. Okay. That's the only part. The casting of the lots is really replaced mm -hmm. by the delegates mm -hmm. voting. Right. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but basically, the mm -hmm. process is the same. Mm -hmm. um, we, we know the qualification of those mm -hmm. who should be placed in office. Mm -hmm. We have guidance on that right. from the Bible, from the spirit mm -hmm. of prophecy. Uh, we bathe this process with mm -hmm. prayer, mm -hmm. even when the, the folks meet at the uh, at there to make a decision. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of praying, plenty yes. praying. And then, when you're ready to make the decision, mm -hmm. it's made by votes of the delegates. Mm -hmm. But at the end of that process, just as it was back then mm -hmm. in the early church, so today, it is we, we deeply believe that it is God who has chosen mm -hmm. that person, elected that person. One yeah. sentence on prayer at session. Uh, as mature Christians believing in God, yes. we, when we pray, must not say, if the decision did not go based on how I'm thinking, mm. it's not God. No, 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 no pray no, no. and let God's will be done. That's Amen. very important. That's correct. Yeah. That, that, that's important, Pastor, as you said, yes. as I said earlier on. We have this thing, if something goes my way, yes. then, mm -hmm. yeah, the spirit. Mm -hmm. Even in church elections, you have yes. a person's question, yes. well, well, who? Which spirit led? Because mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. uh, Ayala was chosen who was not. Yes. It's always God. Because God. as I said, God could stop it. And mm -hmm. if he didn't stop it, it may not, you know, it's, it's not, it's, remember, it's not us, it's God. Yes. Yes, yeah? so we have, to, <laughs> we, have to, we have to learn to respect that. Um, yes, thank you, all of you. We've seen all the comments. Seen all the comments. It's amazing. Choosing leaders applicable um, for, for the church to one, pray. Okay. To specification, mm -hmm. what the qualities choosing from the individuals. Everyone are leaders, but in God's church, there, are, there is um, one leader. Thank you for, for coming. Um, yeah. Pastors, we, we move on. There is, we just looked at a situation in the, in the, in the Old in the New sorry, Testament, in the New Testament yeah. but now we want to look at another situation in the New Testament. Um, in the Old Testament, Old Testament sorry. Yeah. We just look at the New and we go back to the Old. And that, is, um, that situation is, is recorded in 1 Samuel 16, one to seven. So I'll read those verses, and Doc, after that you'll you'll respond. Sure. Yes. First Samuel um, sixteen, um, one to seven. Re same reading from the easy, um, reading version. It says, "The Lord said to Samuel, Stop being sad about Saul. Mm -hmm. I have decided that he will no longer be the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. Fill your horn with olive oil and go. I am mm -hmm. sending you to a man whose name is Jesse. He lives mm -hmm. in Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to become king." Samuel said, if I go to do that, people will tell Saul about it. Then he will kill me. The mm. Lord said, take a calf with you. Tell the people what you, that you have come to offer sacrifice to the Lord. Then I asked Jesse to come out to the sacrifice. I will show you what to do after that. I will show you the person that you must anoint with the oil. Samuel obeyed the Lord. He went to Bethlehem. The leaders of the town went out to meet Samuel, but they were very afraid. They asked him, have you come to visit us as a friend? Samuel replied, yes, I do not bring any trouble. I have come to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Make yourselves clean, mm -hmm. then come to the sacrifice with me. Samuel made Jesse and his sons clean to worship the Lord. Then he took them with him to the sacrifice. 
When they arrived, Samuel saw Jesse's son, Eliab. Samuel thought, I am sure that the Lord has chosen this man to be king. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at how handsome or how tall Eliab is. Mm. I have not chosen him. The Lord does not look at people in the way that people do. People look at the face and body of the person, mm -hmm. but the Lord sees what they're like on the inside. And, the, um, and we, we'll stop there for now. Oh, that so was, what's your comment <laughs> on that, Doc? Yeah, that, that's a very interesting passage, and a lot could be said, but let me just deal specifically to what we're dealing with here. Um, in the first place, it was God who chose Saul. God who chose. No, no, God is about to choose somebody else in the place of Saul. And God told him, stop crying over Saul. Somebody else is going to be in place. And I want to say to our constituency, a lot of people have been talking to me, and, and some of them have even been <laughs> reprimanding me. Listen, stop crying over Clinton. He's gone. <laughs> Clinton is gone. God says, I'm sending you now to choose my leaders. Mm -hmm. So now we have to listen to God. Now, and this, this is the key thing here. In this whole process, just as uh, what we, Pastor Gittins comment about, it is God who is doing the choosing. And, and we have to be careful because Samuel, I mean, that's, that's a man of God. Have that's mercy. a prophet of God. Yeah, and I've, God is sending his prophet. But when he gets there, he, he says he runs ahead of God. This is the man. Yeah, comment on that dog. Comment on that. This is the prophet. You know. <laughs> this is the man. So he, he chose, as soon as he got there, he should have said, Lord, no, I'm here. Show me the man. But he said, this is the man. Now we go to session. We don't go in empty head. People go into session and a lot of people already have in their head who will be president, who will be secretary, who will be this, who will be that. But when we get there and we, we go down into, into real prayer now in, inside that um, nominating committee, we are to ask God, God, who is the man? Because lest we make the same mistake that Samuel made and said, this is the man. God said, no, 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 this is not the man. Then God told him, this is the man. Okay. So as we go to session, um, we, we go, don't want to empty head. But when we get in there and we get on the nominating committee or we have to vote the report of the nominating committee, the nominating committee, they have to go down in prayer and all of us are praying, continue to pray. And then God guides by the vote of the delegates who would be the leader elected. Mm -hmm. When that leader is elected, be it who it is, even though you think, um, it's a pastor who is here, only here 10 years. We have pastors 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. And why they choose a pastor who will be there 15 years? That is not our prerogative. That's God's prerogative. And whoever God chooses and says, this is the one that you elect, all of us say hallelujah, praise the Lord. We go along and we rally We go. But it is God who does the choosing. Important. And... and um uh, you comment your comment there. The prophet got it wrong. Imagine. Yes, he got it wrong. <laughs> Imagine prophet. it. The prophet got it yeah. wrong. And the prophet saw the man and said this. And God said, yeah. no, 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 no. And that's the prophet. Yes. <laughs> you know? Hold it. So it's very instructive to me that yes. we who are God's children can get it wrong. Correct. We can, we can go. And Correct. so it always comes down to, to submitting to God, as you said, yes. as you, you, you said, Doc, and I normally use the term, I've heard it and I've used it since. The yes. Holy Spirit doesn't bypass the brain. No. That is. You go with God is your brain, so exactly. you have persons. Yes. But when you then give it to the spirit, and the spirit is leading exactly. the, uh, another direction, exactly. then you follow the spirit. It's exactly. like Samuel. Samuel right. had something. Yes. But God said, no, 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 no. 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 Right. So, <laughs> no. Yeah. so it's important to follow God. Amen. Yes. It's Amen. always important to, Amen. to follow Amen. God and not one's um, own own inclination. That's right. Yes. <laughs> so the work of the church, um, pastors. The work of the church is to spread the everlasting gospel. I mean, mm -hmm. session or no session, the work of the church is to spread the everlasting gospel. Um, but what contributing role does session play in the promulgation of the gospel? Yes. Well, well, Pastor, you know, uh, spreading the gospel calls for proper organization. Organization. Correct. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And at session, that's what we do. Yes. 
Hence, there is a connection. Okay. There is a connection where the youth work, where the personal ministries, where the treasury, whatever. There is a connection. Yes. Uh, hence, that's why we have to get it right. E.G. White says in Acts of the Apostle, uh, as she begins, she says, the church is, God, is God's appointed agency, agency for the salvation Agents. of men. That's right. Right? Uh, it was organized, organized for service. That's right. Uh, hence, uh, going to session... Before is not apart from spreading the gospel. No. It is to spread the gospel better. When we are organized well, it's easier to spread the gospel. Uh, let me just go into the negative. Uh, if you go to session and you come out of... No, let me go into the positive. Uh, you go into session and leaders and officers are chosen and the constituency is pleased with who you are you, you have chosen, it would mean that there's a synergy and individuals are more willing and whipped up to assist in promulgating the gospel. Yeah. So I use the positive. Yeah. We, okay. we, we're happy to work with the leaders because, listen, uh, the process was followed and we know this is the mission. Whoever are these officers, we are willing to work with them because we are leading souls away from the kingdom of Satan to embrace Jesus Christ and Christianity. Correct. Whatever. Correct. Yeah. Doc, yeah. No, well, well session, are very, session is very, very important to the advancement of the mission of the church. And that is why the delegates who are going there are not representing um, the interests of the church. They are representing the interests of the whole, the whole, the whole conference. Yeah. Because what is happening here is about how do we move the conference forward. Mm -hmm. And, um, and in God's, God's electing, God has given various gifts. Um, let me quickly give, use my example. I was teaching a class in, in the university when they called me out of the class while lecturing and told me they just voted that you should be the president of the Guinea a mission. I said, me? Ella Trotman said, yes. I said, no, 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 no. And then he spoke to me, he spoke to me here and Ella... Um, uh, what's his name? Self. Me too. Uh, no, no, no. Or uh, the active man that went to uh, to the to the division. Telemark. Telemark yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, um, after I agreed, Telemark raised his hand and he prayed. Boy, I had real dissonance because I asked God. I say, where do I go from here? Where do I go from here? And then God started telling me. God showed me. Hey, you just came from Andrews. You trained in missions. So why are you asking? You use your training. Mm -hmm. And that just opened my whole window for me. So the thing is that going to session is, is very important what happens at the session. Because the, whoever is president will have to be someone who has God's agenda at heart. Mm -hmm. Because if yes. you choose yes. a president that don't care anything about missions, mm. the, 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 the conference will rose higher than this leader, mm. they go follow the leader. So, and the leader is going to do a lot of things. The budget wouldn't reflect evangelism. Mm -hmm. And then, when you go to session, who do we choose as the personal ministry's leader? And that is why the folks, in choosing the delegates, we have to choose delegates who understand the working of the church. And that's one of the guidance. Who have experience and understand the working of the church. So we choose a um, personal ministry's leader who rally the lay people. We want a president who is focused on the mission of the church and can cast that vision and keep running that. And God is going to use the different gifts to do that. So session is all about, is all about the mission. Yes. All the directors that we choose, mm -hmm. all the directors for all the different departments, they have to have a mission focus. Yes. The youth director have to be focusing the youth on mission. Mm -hmm. So the whole is a whole. The whole ought to be a mission focus. Right. And yes. that is why session is so important. Yes. yes, so we shouldn't see... We shouldn't see um, a session as just an administrative or, 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 or election. No. Yes. It's the process of Pastor Giddens started by saying yes. the administrative process, the guidance. Dr. Correct. Lewis ended by saying, yeah, that, everything is about, is, is, is about um, the promulgation of the gospel. The exactly. structure, who you put there. Correct. To, yeah, so we shouldn't see it as, a, a, as an end in itself. No, it's really no. a means to an end. Right, Thank you. Right. Um, Thank you. Pastor White, we recognize your comment there. Yeah, she's saying that. This is a very good, um, yes, this is a mm -hmm. relevant conversation with this season. That's right. <laughs> I told you that. I told you yeah, we thank you, Dr. White. Men, <laughs> the spiritual leaders to a church. Thank you yeah. so much, Dr. White. Our time is running away, yes. gentlemen. Let's see if we can get it to conclude. Mm -hmm. Which is correct to say at the end of a session? Yeah, yeah. A, a leader yeah. was elected. 
or B, the leaders were appointed. Is there a difference? <laughs> um, to, to be elected is the process that we have outlined. Correct. And individuals from the constituency representing the congregations within, in this case, mm -hmm. the Grenada Conference, they are voting. So you don't just grab a man and say, this individual, no, no, no. So that's, that's the difference between being elected. Our entire process is yes. followed, and at the end, elected. people are voting. Mm -hmm. Appointed, hey, you, you're doing it wrong. You just grab you and say, hey, you go and lead. Yes. Right? So there's a difference. Well, well yeah. I, won't say, I won't say you're doing it wrong. <laughs> let, 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 let me just make a little adjustment All on right. that. Um, I agree with you in the beginning, because what, I ha what is happening at this session People are being elected. elected yeah. Guided by God, they are being elected. The appointment will be a little different. For example, when the administration meet, the administration is going to decide who do we want to be the, the, um, the one who is going to um, audit the books, the auditor, who is going to be the auditor. So they talk about that, and then they're going to bring a recommendation to the, the committee. So you could more or less say, like, that person is appointed. Yeah. And, um, and then there's a time period for both the elected. The elected has a time period. Mm -hmm. And the person appointed also has a time period. It's not like employing a worker. Because if you're just employing uh, somebody as a, a secretary, that person is there until whatever time they choose to retire, what the case might be. But in the case of the appointed person, there is a period. So the auditor knows I'm there for four years. At the end of four years, the administration, the new administration will decide um, what happens? Yeah. Would I be reappointed here or not? But the, the folks who go to session, they are elected by the constituency for four years. Yeah. Yes, in our case, in our case, four years. If you think of the GC, yeah, the, five years. Um, Queen Quinium, then yes. we think of the five years. Yes. And, and I think that's important because um, um, it's a period. Yes, it's, a period. It's like the government. Folks yes. must know we we there for a period. Period. That's right. <laughs> and that when that time's up, then that's it. You yes. know, if yes. if the population keeps you yes. back, the church, elect well not elect elects you again. Elects you again. <laughs> again. <laughs> and and you um, see, when you have that concept, it really takes the pain mm -hmm. out of it because if uh, we go to a session right now, and um, someone um, who had been serving in a particular capacity, somebody else is elected now to lead that. That person shouldn't feel bad. Do not reject it. It's not a rejection of the person. It's that God is guiding as to who they, they believe is the best person to lead at this, this point, particular point. time. Mm -hmm. In fact, the next four years, the person who was not elected now may be elected. Then. So mm -hmm. it's the leadings of God, and we just have to respect. And to me, if you, if you operate like that, it takes the pain out of it to say, oh boy, they reject me, boy. And you're feeling bad in the session. You want to cry, you go, man, you cry. And you tell your wife and them, look what they do me. I work so hard. I watch what they have done to me. No, 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 no. You are there for four years. When we get there tomorrow, Pastor Isaac, well, after um, the nominating committee uh, is, is, is elected, the um, nominating committee is, 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 um, formed. Is, uh, is formed. And they go to work and they come back. As soon as they come back and they said, we put into nomination X person for president. Immediately, I'm no longer president. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm no longer president. Immediately, I am no longer president. Sorry, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The new president, yeah. no. That's the president. I'm now a member mm -hmm. of the church. And then they go to choose the directors and whatnot. When they come back, and um, up to then, the person's still a director. But when they come and they said, we have now elected mm -hmm. X as the director, mm -hmm. All those whose name did not call, they are no longer directors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and of course, as you said, we are <clears throat> human beings. Yes. So yes. human beings, human you share emotions. Yeah, you feel sad, emotion. you feel happy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and what have you. So it's yes. not that you say, okay, we are insulated. Yes. But I think what Doc, the don't point... Feel rejected. Yes. The, the point Doc is making is that you don't, don't go wrong and, and you know, you yes. feel as a human being. You, yeah. you can feel happy, you can yeah, feel sad. Yeah, That's yeah, an emotion. Yeah. And yeah. That, no, there's nothing wrong with emotion. No, nothing wrong. But I think it's the attitude towards it. Correct. Yes, the attitude thereafter. Yes. And and then, again, some of us we allow the members to call us and tell yeah. us, yeah, yeah, you why know, do you do that? <laughs> you, you know, so <laughs> I think it's all of that. Yeah, all that. Well, we almost there. We almost. Uh, well, finally, um, pastors, is there any counsel from Ellen White related to session? Anything that Ellen White says about yeah. session, be it GC mm -hmm. session, session, and all. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to share with us? Um, the as le let me just say here that I am convinced that you chose two 
appropriate individual. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I am convinced. Um, as you know, I served two terms here. That's right. And I'm going to read a statement here mm. that helped me. Correct. To know that, hey, Charles, hey, you can do your best. Yes. And function maximum. That's correct. And they don't have a right. Or you don't have Never. a right to think that you have to sit have in that to. seat. Again. No, sir. I'm going to read a statement here. Yeah. It comes from uh, E.G. White, Desire of Ages, mm. chapter 18. He must increase. Uh -huh. She says, God calls a man to do a certain work. Yes. And when he has carried it as far as he's qualified to take it, hmm. the Lord brings in others to carry it still farther. That's right. That helped me. Yes. Okay. I mean, personally, that helped me. Uh, uh, in 2015 when I would have served one term and it helped me in 2019 when I would have completed two terms. Yeah. And I am saying, and, and I, it's not just a statement. I went through the chapter in terms of John the Baptist and his disciples bringing all types of comments to him, yeah. right? And it was very clear in my mind that, hey, Charles or whoever administrator or director, hey, you like John the Baptist, can be told, hey, your time is up. So in terms of this program, the leaders and uh, would-be leaders who are listening, let us understand that John's work was outstanding, but still he said, he, Jesus, must increase and I must decrease. Beautiful. I like that. That really and, helped me. And, and, I bring, and, and this applies to me um, directly. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, who president have been elected mm -hmm. five times? Okay, good. I mean, God has done that. A record breaking? But two years ago, mm -hmm. God said to me, mm -hmm. my work is over. Mm -hmm. So people say, but you look so happy as if you're glad not to, to be president mm -hmm. again. You're glad not. God told me two years ago mm -hmm. that my work as president mm -hmm. is over. So I cannot stand as president. Mm -hmm. God showed me that. Mm -hmm. So, go, and, and I believe God has used me to take that work where he can use me to bring it. Mm -hmm. And now God is going to use another gift mm -hmm. to take that work as the president and bring it to another level. Where God is going to bring it, I don't know. Okay. I know when I came in, I didn't know where I was going. Mm -hmm. And he gave me direction mm -hmm. as to where to go. Now I believe I've reached where God says, that's it. You have done what you could have done. Mm -hmm. Now you must move out of the way. There are other guys there with other gifts. Let me use them to carry my work forward. So I, I'm, I'm not bitter about anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not sad about anything. I'm going not happy and satisfied yes, yeah. because I know God has guided me. And yes. I'm very confident mm -hmm. that God is going to guide this constituency yes. um, as we start session tomorrow to exactly who the leader is going to be. Mm -hmm. And I will be there holding up my leaders and running with them because I know God has chosen them. So that, that's, that's a very good um, top point from Ellen White. Um, she also says about choosing delegates in Testimonies, Volume 9, 262. It is God's plan that members chosen to be delegates be trustworthy, tried, and proved, mm -hmm. able to reason from cause to effect, mm -hmm. because they are to lay the plans that shall be followed in the advancement of the work. Right. And that's very important. Right. People whom we are choosing to go as delegates mm -hmm. must be spiritual people. Yes. You can have somebody who live in all kind of life, somebody who is um, robbing God of tithes and offering. They come in to make spiritual decisions mm -hmm. when they are not spiritual. Serious. This is a spiritual process. Have mercy. And the church got to look at that. The people who, are, who we are sending to make those decisions must be people that we know they are spirit-led. And, and that's very important. We have that clear guidance. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, of course, delegates yeah. are already chosen, but of yeah. course, that yes. comment could be for the future. For the future. But that's important yeah. because sometimes we can, you know, um, status. Yeah. If, if you have exactly. degrees, you choose. Yes. Yes. If you have a little money, they yeah. choose you. But exactly. no, no, it's no. about spirituality. So yes. you may not have any degrees, yes. but you are spiritual. Correct. You know, God walks through the spiritual, exactly. not necessarily. But it was a delight. It was a delight yes. to have. Um, both um, Dr. Lewis and yes. Pastor Giddens yeah. um, on this program. As I said at mm -hmm. the commencement of the program, yeah. um, the next time Dr. Lewis is with us here and Pastor Scorner, that's um, right. <laughs> who was introducing him, we have to say, we now have the ex president, the ex -president. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, with us. We're happy we went over time. But, um, Doc, uh, closing. Yes, well, closing point. I want to really thank all of you who have been online with us from week after week and, um, you know, the support you have been given to our conference, and I want to encourage you to continue to pray for us and to continue uh, to support us, you know, 
Um, you're going to see me from time to time. I know that the, the guys will be giving me the opportunity to come on Pastor's Corner yeah, or to preach every now and again. So we are going to see. I want to say hello to my good friend, Sister Latchman, who I just saw, came in a while ago. You know, I love you very much. Uh, you know, and um, thank you so much for all your support and, um, and for, for your prayers. You know, you have been uh, tremendous. I hear Alicia early on. Um, you know, you have been there regularly supporting us all through the, the pandemic. And, um, you know, and you also uh, support us with your prayer and uh, otherwise. And we just appreciate that. And we appreciate all of you who have been on Pastor's Corner. And a lot is taking place. I want to encourage you to continue to tell all your friends, tell the other members, come to Pastor's Corner. A lot is taking place here and a lot will be done. I want to thank Pastor Isaac for choosing that topic today. I think it's very relevant and very important. And um, I thank God for what we have accomplished today. Thank you, Ella, so much and for your ministry. Praise the Lord. Pastor, uh, can you want to say something? I, I'm not, nobody is supposed to speak after the person. Well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> However, I am doing this. That, yes, yes, uh, ma'am. I appreciated working with you. Yes, praise That's God. That's from my heart. Praise God. As a pastor yes. and as a fellow administrator. Yes. And what I really liked about working with you is that you always had the mission focus. That's correct. Carrying the gospel yes. to the yes. world. Yes. Thanks a lot. Dad. Praise God. All right, well, God bless. now I know why I had to allow you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, brethren and friends, we thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Um, next week, I'm past this corner. Um, the session will be over. And um, what are we talking about? Not sure. But um, we'll be there next week on Pastor's Corner. Yes. God bless you. And Pastor Giddens, you can say a word of prayer for us sure. to close off today. Dear God and Father, thanks ever so much for your working in our lives. Amen. Thanks for organizing this church. So well organized. Yes. That we can go to session tomorrow. Amen. Grant us peace, I pray. Please. Grant us togetherness. Please. Grant us wisdom. Please. Firstly, we as pastors, help us to keep that mission focus. Yes. To carry the gospel to all the world. Yes. Lead out in terms of the lives of our members. And help that even as we reflect in terms of the future, we will all remember that Jesus Christ is coming soon. And yes. our duty is to pull men, women, boys, and girls out of the clutches and grips of Satan yes. and point them to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Dismiss us now with your richest blessings, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. Praise amen. God.